Okay, Shafe, the first movie we're going to talk about today is the new animated film, Despicable Me. Um, let's see, what can we say about it? It stars Steve Carell as a villain. And the villain in this case, he was once a supervillain. Now he's in a bit of a, a slump. Mm -hmm. He wants to pull off this big heist, in this case, uh, stealing the moon, so he can get more financing and just become the best villain, I guess. Mm -hmm. But he needs help doing it, and um, he enlists the help, oddly enough, of three little uh, orphan girls. And... You know, Merchant banking is, is also involved, speaking of villainy. Yeah, and that's true. They did. They take uh, poke some fun at the Lehman Brothers in it, so it, which is quite good. So what did you think about this one? The Bank of Evil. I do all my banking at the Bank of Evil. <laughs> this movie was relentlessly cute. It was cute almost to a fault. There were the c three cute little orphans. The right. villains were cute. There were even cute guns in this movie. And oh, look, here comes a really cute amusement park. Can we stop here? Can we, huh? You know, and... It's not a Pixar movie, so you won't get the kind of depth you get out of something like Up or, or Toy Story 3. Uh, it's 3D, there's a lot of cute stuff flying at you. This is a reversal, because I'm usually the one that hates the cute, and you're usually way more open-minded. What's happened between us? Mm -hmm. Have you been, I don't know, touched by an evil villain? I don't know. Always one of the fun things about animated films are the, all the voices in it. Obviously, we've got Steve Carell as the evil villain. Um, other names to point out, his nemesis in this, another villain, an up-and-coming villain, uh, Vector, is Jason Segel, mm -hmm. and he's funny, camps it up. Uh, Julie Andrews, in a strange German accent, plays his unloving mother. And the other one that I thought was really interesting is that uh, in uh, Dr. Or what's his name, Gru has the uh, helpful scientist that works with him. And I thought it was Michael Gambon at first, but it's Russell Brand doing a mm -hmm. voice totally different than his own, right? Playing like a funkier version of Q from the Bond movies. We've been working on this for a while. It's a anti-gravity series. I meant to close that. He'll be all right, I'm sure. Do the effects wear off? Uh, so far, no. No, they don't. Okay, uh, another movie we're looking at today is uh, a sequel to a Swedish thriller, a movie called The Girl Who Played With Fire. It's a sequel to The Girl With the Dragon Tattoo, starring an, an actress named Numi Rapass, yeah. who is the most interesting-looking, kind of punky, almost boyish actor working these days. An interesting look to her. Ja, i eftermiddag så hittades alltså ytterligare en person mördad. Mannen, en 56-årig socialt engagerad advokat, hittades skjuten i sin lägenhet i centrala Stockholm. Och polisen försöker nu kartlägga sambanden mellan de tre morden. Ett av offren, journalisten Dag Svensson, arbetade för tidningen Millennium, där den kände journalisten Mikael Blomqvist är ansvarig utgivare. Michael Nyquist is the journalist in it. Yeah. It follows the first one. She's a uh, computer hacker. Um, He's a journalist, uh, an expose sort of oriented journalist, and uh, this one, I, I didn't like this one as much as the first one, I have to say, because the first one had a lot better exteriors, it was more beautiful to look mm -hmm. at, but I did like about this one, creepy old guys up to no good. Creepy old guys? Because there's a whole cache of creepy old guys that have nefarious history. There's apparently a lot of those in Sweden, especially around Stockholm and its suburbs, and also they, they suffer a bit from like uh, bad Bond villain syndrome where they'll, they'll leave somebody to die with some elaborate kind of death mechanism, right. and then they'll escape, right? I'm thinking, kill them, hey, kill them right away. That's have you not movies? seen any Bond movies yet? You have to kill them, kill them right away. Kill them right now. And it also did get a little bit far-fetched in that, in the fact that one of the, the sort of henchmen for one of the main bad guys is sort of, you can't kill them, right? You couldn't kill them. You can't even tase them. You, you know? can't even tase them. So it was a little bit far-fetched, but I think at the root of it all, it's still a pretty good story, and it's mm -hmm. a lot better what Holly, than Hollywood does, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, and it's, and, and it's a sh They are planning to remake it. The first movie, and they'll remake the other ones if that one works too. Oh, with big, that's going to Big A-list cast, but uh, yeah, you know, small, low to the ground, uh, fun, gritty. That's what these movies are. And it looks like regular people. You know how I'm big on that, right? They look like regular I people. I like regular people yeah. too. But be warned, though. There's a fair bit of violence in this, and it gets a little bit harsh a few times, right? Oh yeah, but if you saw the first one, you'll know what to expect. Yeah.